this insta lecture will be on uh, wilson disease and before going to the wilson disease you need to know that there are two key copper transport associated diseases are there which are disorders of the pathology of the copper transport and copper is very much essential for our survival as such that it is required in very minimal amount these two disorders of copper transport one is known as menkes disease m e n k e s menkes disease another one is wilson disease now menkes disease is a neurodegenerative disease it's a fatal deadly neurodegenerative disease and the basic problem is that it's a kind of state of copper malabsorption copper cannot be absorbed from the intestine resulting in a state of lack of copper deficiency of copper in our body and that results in a fatal neurodegenerative disease on the other side wilson disease is a state of copper overload and uh, there is a defect in the hepatic uh, transport the biliary excretion of the copper actually which i'm going to explain shortly in details now menkes disease occurs due to a defect of the atp7a a for apple gene and wilson disease occurs due to defect in the atp7b b for banana gene now the role of atp7b please pay attention you need to understand it plays crucial role in two things firstly it helps to incorporate copper in the hepatocyte into apocelluloplasmin and this apocelluloplasmin which is bound with copper they get released into our blood in the form of celluloplasmin normally our body they don't allow free metallic ions to roam freely because free metallic ions are kind of like mischievous young kids you not allow them to roam freely because they can cause destruction or damage that's why we put the mischievous kids always with either our parents or their parents or with some nanny so that they are not allowed to do uh, damage or destruction in the nearby vicinity similarly our bodies they don't allow free radicals ion to roam free ions to roam freely on the body because they can elicit free radical mediated damage and that's why usually they are always bound to some form of uh, carriage protein like in case of copper this is celluloplasmin now this incorporation of uh, copper into celluloplasmin uh, occurs in the hepatocyte and that becomes defective due to the and that requires this atp7b protein second thing the atp7b protein does that it helps in the biliary excretion of the copper from the hepatocyte to the bile now if you uh, remember the basic uh metabolic pathway the key the key concepts in the metabolic pathways of the copper copper mostly get absorbed in the proximal uh, part of the small intestine the duodenum mostly like iron and then from there they are bound with the uh, albumin and then they comes into the liver hepatocytes and the liver they get bound with celluloplasmin apocelluloplasmin and get released into the blood in the form of celluloplasmin and uh, th- they are also from the hepatocyte they could be excreted by the bile now normally we uh, eat 1 to 2 mg of copper per day but we only require 0.75 mg of copper per day so the the rest of the copper which are excess in our body that usually get excreted by mostly by the bile 90% of them now when there is a defect in the atp7b this copper cannot be excreted from the hepatocytes into the bile so the net effect would be more and more and moreover there can also cannot be excreted into the blood because uh, the the incorporation of the celluloplasmin apocelluloplasmin is not happening due to the defect in the atp7b so when the atp7b is mutated more and more amount of copper they are getting accumulating in the hepatocytes and the net outcome is this that they would elicit free radical mediated damage uh, within the hepatocyte and hepatocyte would undergo apoptosis and they actually die the hepatocytes would die due to the toxicity and all the excess copper now would be spilled into the blood and they already done the damage to the liver and now they are going to damage to the rest of the body too 
So from the blood they can be deposited in the various extra hepatic tissues. One of the organ they commonly get deposited which is diagnostically useful is they can be deposited over the cornea and the eye. Uh, usually they get deposited over the decipens membrane. And in the decipens membrane they their deposition results in a uh, Kaiser Fletcher ring, KF ring, which is diagnostically useful. Having said that, they are not uh, specific for <coughs> Wilson disease because they can be seen in other conditions too. Cholestatic disorders like uh, primary biliary cholangitis, which is the new name for primary biliary cirrhosis. Uh, and another eye finding could be seen due to the deposition of copper in the lens that is sunflower cataract. So, two eye manifestations occur in uh, Wilson disease, one is sunflower cataract, and more diagnostically more useful one is K F ring. And a, and a, and a, another organ which they predominantly involve and causes a lot of damage and a major manifestation is neuropsychiatric manifestation. They they also go to the basal ganglia in the brain, and they can cause hepatolenticular degeneration. They say because they cause uh, damage to the both mostly to the liver and the uh, brain, the basal ganglia part and they can present with a uh, Parkinson like feature. So if you are getting a children who has associated liver pathology and also presenting with some Parkinson like feature and it's a young kid or the age group is 6 to 35 or 6 to 40, this is the age group where Wilson disease is particularly present, then you have to think about Wilson disease. And the presentation, the neurological manifestation could be with uh, Parkinson's movement related disorder, there could be tremor, and there could be some Parkinson like rigidity. Up to 20% cases, there could be some uh, psychiatric manifestations also. They can present with depression. Depression is quite common in, out of the psychiatric manifestation. They can have phobia, they can have some compulsive behaviors. So, mainly three organs are affected by uh, Wilson disease, that's, that's you need to keep in mind. The most important one which usually involve first and there could be the usually the first manifestation in a young kid that is the liver and the liver manifestation could occur in various ways. It can manifest with uh, acute hepatitis, chronic hepatitis, cirrhosis, even in some cases the rare hepatocellular carcinoma. Wilson disease can act as a risk factor for hepatocellular carcinoma. And it can occur at a very early age, even a case report was there that that uh, in a 12 year old kid having Wilson disease they presented with hepatocellular carcinoma. So other than these three key organs, the other organs which could be affected in Wilson disease are, there are many actually, it could be cause uh, hypoparathyroidism because the parathyroid could be affected, it could cause joint involvement present with arthritis. In hematology they can present with uh, Coombs negative hemolytic anemia because this excess copper can cause damage to the RBC membrane. Uh, other than this, in the kidney, they can present with Fanconi syndrome. Remember, this is Fanconi syndrome, not Fanconi anemia. Fanconi anemia is an inherited aplastic anemia. Fanconi syndrome is a proximal renal tubular dysfunction, actually. So, that could be associated or uh, seen in this uh, patient of the Wilson disease. So these are the various organs which could be affected and the system manifestation could occur. And uh, next is their diagnosis. Diagnosis, the first part is that the serum copper level is not very useful. The serum copper level could be high, low or normal depending on the, the, the disease progression or the, the, the tempo of the disease, you understand, or the state of the disease, stage of the disease. The useful finding is urinary copper excretion. Urinary copper excretion obviously would be elevated. You can understand why because uh, in the normal state, 90% of our 80 to 90% of copper gets excreted in the bile, and only 5 to 10% roughly they get excreted by kidney renal. But in this condition, there is excess amount of copper in my body in the blood, and because bile excretion is mostly blocked because due to the <coughs> mutation of the ATP7B, so the renal excretion becomes the main channel to excrete the copper from our body and that's why urinary copper excretion level and already there is too much copper in my body 
in this state. So there would be increased level of urinary copper excretion. Serum ceruloplasmin level would be low. I already mentioned the idea because ATP7B is required for incorporation of the copper into the ceruloplasmin, aposeruloplasmin and that get released into the blood. As it's not occurring, obviously we don't expect uh, more level of serum ceruloplasmin. And the ceruloplasmin which is get excreted from the liver, which is not bound with the copper, that is basically highly unstable. So, so it, it, it pro quickly gets degraded in the blood. So even that is getting released from the hepatocyte, that will not stay for long. That's why overall the serum ceruloplasmin level is very low and so diagnostic useful finding in this condition. Liver biopsy findings are non-specific. They can show features of acute hepatitis, chronic hepatitis. Uh, sometimes they could be mimicking the autoimmune hepatitis uh, on the biopsy. They can show Mallory bodies. Uh, which is also non-specific because it's in many conditions uh, and uh, some cases they could show features of cirrhosis also and one of the early findings could be uh, fatty changes <coughs> steatosis could be seen in this condition in the biopsy changes and some stains uh, which are not so useful used nowadays <coughs> like orsin rhodamine they could be also used for this condition in the brain there is an interesting histopathic findings they are known as opalaski cell uh, which is uh, typically seen in globus pallidus and they sometimes like to ask this thing that opalaski cell is associated or distinct feature of which condition answer is wilson disease that you need to know and <coughs> which kind of hemolytic anemia which kind of anemia do you see in this condition answer is Crohn's negative hemolytic anemia uh, is seen in this thing and a very useful test which is very sensitive as they say that is estimation of copper in the per gram dry weight of liver biopsy uh, and usually the cutoff limit is more than 250 microgram of copper per gram dry weight of liver biopsy some experts consider that that cutoff limit is too high to decrease it to 75 more than 75 so as estimation of copper in program dry weight of liver biopsy would be also useful in this condition so these are the key points actually you need to know about wilson disease in a nut cell that it's an autosomal recessive disorder associated with the mutation of atp 7b gene 7b 7a atp 7a gene is associated with menkes disease and that results in atp 7b plays two crucial roles <clears throat> it helps into incorporation of copper into the celluloplasmin in the hepatocyte and it also helps the hepatocyte to excrete copper into the bile <clears throat> and as these things cannot occur the progressively more amount of copper accumulates in the hepatocyte causes death and damage to the hepatocyte ultimately spills into the blood from the blood they go to various organs uh, like in eye they can cause caprine sunflower cataract in the brain they particularly damage the basal ganglia present in neuropsychiatric manifestation uh, sometimes mimicking with parkinson and if you get any person uh, or a kid starting from 6 to you know, a mature person like 35 years or 40 years who is present with unexplained liver disease <coughs> unexplained neuropsychiatric disease associated with this you have to rule out the possibility of the Wilson disease and recent disease, the decreased serum celluloplasmin level, increased urinary excretion of the copper, and estimation of copper per gram diameter of the liver biopsy. These are the useful diagnostic tests for it. These are the key things that you need to know. Thank you very much.